Hi, I'm Eleanor Silverstein, and today I am here with Blake Miramount. And Blake owns a company called Architectural Plastics. And um, I have been talking about everybody during this COVID time wearing cloth masks. And some people joke about it, but everybody's walking around wearing it. And being a biologist, here is my concern. We inhale oxygen and we exhale out two things. We exhale out water, hence we fog up the car on a cold night and the car windows, and we exhale out carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is a waste product. So when you wear these cloth masks and you re-inhale the carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide lacks oxygen. That means nature says you must inhale oxygen and you must exhale out the waste product. If you inhale the carbon dioxide, it will latch on to those receptor sites in the, or that part in the hemoglobin and will, that is supposed to be for oxygen. And you will literally uh, starve the hemoglobin, the red blood cell that's in the red blood cells of oxygen. That means the lungs, the heart and your brain and all your other organs will become oxygen starved. And what are some of those side effects? The heart will speed up, a person gets nervous, they get antsy, a heart can really race, they get foggy headed, they can feel nauseous, sick, malaise, dizzy, confused, um, they can faint, they can go into a coma, they can have a seizure and they can die. That's because we need oxygen. Happened to be, I did a post about it, a colleague of mine, Liza Weaver, put up to connect with you, Blake. Blake, tell mm -hmm. us about your brilliant and simple product. <laughs> um, well, we're kind of taking a different tact than the uh, face masks, so we're going with face shields. And um, we got into this about, uh, I think that we started prototyping about a week after the local shutdown that we had here in, uh, Sonoma County. Uh, our business, we do high-end plastic design and fabrication and actually make a lot of biomedical instruments as well as uh, furniture, product displays, all kinds of stuff. Um, so the design element was kind of critical and, and easy for us to do um, the way we're set up and our facility is set up to do this kind of work. Um, so our, our sort of plan uh, after talking to some family and friends that we have that are in the medical world was to uh, really look at the need, which is uh, all the hospitals seem to be completely out of face shields and they're using these disposable face shields that are one time use, one patient use meant to be thrown away after you use them. Um, and there's no supply and, and we're a we work with plastic and the manufacturers that we buy direct from are saying, you know, first day of the shutdown, you're like, okay, we're, we're a week out for getting material that normally could ship out the same day that we order it. Um, second day of the shutdown, two weeks, third day of the shutdown, month and a half. And now some of the manufacturers aren't even accepting orders. And that's, that's how short the material supply is. Um, so we were lucky enough to kind of foresee this. Um, our strategy is to give a reusable shield. Um, it's not ideal for medical workers, but um, it can be sanitized. And given they can't get anything else, I figured, let me give them something that's a better grade of plastic than what they can otherwise get and something they can reuse over and over again. Um, can I say something though? Okay. Yeah. When you say it's not ideal for those in the medical profession, um, I hear that Kaiser just bought over 20,000 of these face shields for you for their workers. Is that true? That's correct. Um, so we have two different types and um, the type the, that Kaiser approved, uh, we're going to be shipping out the 20,000 this Friday, which is uh, <laughs> it's a little hectic. Uh, we literally just geared up our whole production line to do this last week, but um, I'm excited to say that we can uh, not only get these 20,000 out, but we have enough material coming in to do 210,000 uh, shields that we now have two different designs for, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute. That's amazing. Uh, Actually, I, I'm, I'm jumpy. I would love to see them. Oh, sure. 
Um, so yeah, I actually just pulled this off of our production floor. Um, this is how we're, we're shipping them here. I don't know if you can see that too well, but basically um, we ship them in packs of 10 and in boxes of 100. And um, we have these little, uh, I, I could send you a, a shot of this later, but um, <laughs> basically we give it some simple instructions for how to, how to use our product. Um, and we're manufacturing these uh, using the same face shields that we uh, are making, as well as face masks, which after talking to you, I'm now kind of <laughs> rethinking that whole thing. Um, but this is, a, this is our first design, and we designed this to um, basically get the best yield out of the material available that we are designating for this, which is um, a point o two o thick, optically clear Lexan polycarbonate. Um, and that's foggy looking because that's plastic protectant over. Yeah, yeah. So I'll take this off. But basically, we we leave the material masked. It comes masked both sides, and um, so when you get it, we do that so that you can keep it um, clean and and free of any impurities until you're ready to use it. And what do you hook it to? Um, so we actually, it's it's a pretty. Pretty simple process. Um, we're just using staples, elastic, and foam, and some adhesive. <laughs> so. But I mean, what do they put that one to? Oh, um, that's so the elastic that goes around the back. Right. Um, we we yeah. basically leave the elastic on the wrong side, um, so they ship flatter. So when you get it, all you need to do is just take the elastic band and flip it over to the other side, like this. I like that that bends around the side of the face too. Yeah, and that's um, that was really our thinking is that's by nice. doing the by doing these creases, it actually helps tuck it um, around your face a bit better. Um, okay. Most of the companies that are making these things are using a um, really thin uh, plastic. Uh, it's 0 0.007 of an inch thick. And it's water bottle plastic. It's called PET or PETG, and it's literally garbage. It can't be recycled, and it's not as optically clear as what we're using. Um, you can also see that the thicker polycarbonate we're using. I mean, I'll put it up to the camera. You're, you're going to see the light of my camera, but it's totally clear. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, but also the the thinner stuff, it comes rippled and, and it can be just sort of distorting if you're looking through it, like a, like a fisheye lens almost. Um, whereas the material we're using is totally flat. So, well, it, so it's like the difference between wearing drugstore really cruddy reading glasses and actually wearing really high quality or decently high quality reading glasses. I cannot imagine looking through my eyes and seeing the world warped and then not losing my balance in that or messing up with the brain. I like my brain to be as good as she can be. And with your, with your high quality poly polycarbonate product, right? The, the ability for visual acuity protects you. You are protected. Your brain is protected. Your well-being is protected with a shield like that. So what does the other shield look like? Um, so we were working with a number of hospitals and one of them wanted a little bit um, longer uh, face shield. So this this one, uh, we didn't need to crease because we're going with a different blank size, but it's the same polycarbonate material, uh, same foam. And this one is just basically, it's just a bit taller is, is really the main thing and a little bit wider, uh, but basically it just gives you a little bit more coverage. Um, the, the other thing that we're doing with both of our designs, um, there's a lot of sort of hobbyists uh, that are making these things and they're using a solid foam block here. Uh, but we found, and this is what they won't show you, is that <laughs> uh, that tends to fog up very easily because you just have no ventilation to uh, allow the air to escape. So we actually are using three little blocks of foam. I'll kind of lean over so you can see that. And um, I found that that lets the, the hot air from your breath and the moisture from your breath sort of escape out the top. And that, that helps really reduce the fogging, which is- and for carbon actually, dioxide, it can go up Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Help get rid of the carbon. So um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're pretty simple parts. And honestly, my hat's off to, I mean, there's so many people that are just, you know, took it upon themselves, like, like we were talking about before the interview, go down to Home Depot, find whatever clear-ish 
kind of plastic they could and, and make them and that's all well and good but um, the hospitals really don't want that and they will take them as donations it's literally a last line of defense but if you have you know some guy named Jim in a shed who's making it one way and then you have somebody across the country making it another way there's no reliability everyone's different and the medical professionals need to just put these things on know what they're getting and go um, which is why I knew we needed to be able to scale. So, um, you know, and we don't want, you're right on that part. Mm -hmm. you, we don't want to shut down everybody who's being creative. Go ahead and do that for yourself, yeah. and for your neighbors and, and for people, you know, but what you're doing is you're making something that's medically grade acceptable. The hospitals are buying them and you've got a list of them. You know, I was excited because I went to my neighborhood grocer and I saw how sick one of my grocers was getting, I spoke with the manager yesterday and he was getting sick by wearing the, the face masks, the cloth masks. And so we're now looking into our local grocers. Um, I contacted, I don't know if I can say, you know, one of our very, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. I contacted Trader Joe's and talked with the manager there and they're going to talk with corporate. So corporate, I hope you hear this because you need to take care of your people. And it's so affordable for this high quality product. How affordable is this? Um, so basically, as, as we're making more, we keep lowering the price. Um, but right now, if you're buying volume, we can get down to about $10 a shield. And I expect that if we can continue making the volumes, which would be about 20,000 a week, um, it, it mainly just comes down to if we can get better material. And as we're able to get better material, it speeds up our process. So. I think we're going to be seeing them in basically single digit pricing um, over the next month or so, which is really exciting for us. Made from the highest quality product to take care of you. And, you know, I also want to throw in the third group I'd like to see where I would love to see this product is in the senior living facilities, because mm -hmm. can you imagine that everybody working there is wearing these masks for 12 hour shifts their anxiety level going up because they're inhaling carbon dioxide and the poor senior citizens who live there who need to read lips because they can't hear well and you're taking away the ability to communicate. I only say that because my mother is deaf, but most seniors aren't deaf, but they need to see the face. So right. what a perfect product for people who's working, who are working in the senior facility um, places for 12 hour shifts to wear something that keeps them healthy and the people who live there can read their, you know, use the sound and, and reading lips for visual cues. So this is applicable everywhere. Yeah, and, and actually we've sold to several nursing homes as well. Um, oh. and, um, uh, and another group that's pretty hard hit uh, with high risk uh, patients like that are um, uh, hospice centers and um, cancer treatment centers. We've <clears throat> had a really nice lady um, who basically she's been waiting for over a month to get shields and she found us and, and um, came in and, and we just get, we donated uh, to her. But yeah, the, the cancer patients are going through chemo and other treatments are super high risk. So there's so many applications, even dentists. Um, I've had a lot of dentists reach out because they're actually not designated and they can't buy face shields uh, yet, but they will absolutely need them because they have people breathing in their face all day. So I, the demand is so much higher than I think what the news is reporting because they're mainly just focusing on the hospitals. And I think right now, right now they're being sold for like $15 each, but you have to buy a minimum of only 50. And that's- yeah, so uh, up, to, up to 30 bucks I've seen. <laughs> Which okay. is pretty nice. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, I meant to buy from you. So I really want to say thank you. This is a blessing. Your ingenuity, you rerouted your business, you're helping humanity. And my goal is, is that we come through this COVID virus, not getting sicker and that our brains don't get oxygen deprived even minimally, and that it leaves us to be able to reach the front of our brain, our frontal cortex, so we can think and live rich lively lives after all of this is done because we're protecting ourselves from getting sick in every way shape or form by being able to inhale oxygen but keep out the buggies so i want to thank you so much blake um your website is arc 
arcplastics.com. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> That's A R C H plastics with a plural P L A S T I C S dot com. And uh, people will reach out to you, and we're going to get this out to people so that they can make smart decisions and take care of themselves and to take care of others. Well, thank you very much. And I, I actually learned a lot talking to you that I, I had no idea <laughs> about. So I'm really happy that um, we were able to, to kind of talk and, and get your perspective on it because it's, it's enlightening, to say the least. Thank you for doing the right thing and the good thing. Thank you. <laughs> Talk to you soon. All right. Bye.